call the social service meeting to order, please, for April the 26th. I'd ask you to approve the previous minute meetings. We do have a quorum, I must say. Okay, the minutes. Do I have any complaints or concerns about the minutes for the previous meeting? Put it away. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. The motion? Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none is unanimous. Number one item of today. Michelle is here to represent the Department of Social Services, authorizing an agreement with the Treatment Alternatives for Safer Communities, TASC, regarding emergency and transitional shelter services. Thank you, Michelle. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you. Uh, we request permission to renew a contract with a task for um, shelter services for homeless individuals. Primarily, these are people coming out of the criminal justice system, and they provide um, uh, residential substance abuse treatment from 1 to 90 days and additional services to help people find uh, employment and more permanent housing. Um, so I think that's, yeah, that sounds good. Are there any other questions or concerns about this program? It's a redo. We've done it before, and let's see if you got any concerns. It's a motion to approve it, and it's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Number two, authorizing the submission of a grant application regarding a process and technology improvement grant to improve customer services for the SNAP application recipients. Yes, uh, we're uh, requesting a permission to, uh, retroactive permission, um, because the timing of the, the due date for the grant was such that it did not uh, meet your schedule. So we've uh, submitted this grant to the United States Department of Agriculture uh, for three self-service kiosks to be in our uh, reception area. Uh, this is for people who are receiving SNAP. Um, or applica applicants for SNAP mm -hmm. uh, to come in and drop their documents off by themselves. So um, they would scan their documents in, get a receipt, mm -hmm. and they don't have to go through waiting in the waiting room and um, mm -hmm. in line and talk to a person. They can just drop their documents off. Um, and we figured there's, um, we get about a thousand um, visits per month for document drop-offs. And SNAP is about 18% of those. And uh, for every, every drop-off, it's about one to 10, anywhere from one to 10 documents. So it could be a significant savings uh, for the client and for us having to copy that uh, material. Ooh, sounds like a nice service being provided. Um, and we won't questions? know until September. September. That'll, that'll be the time we start. Uh, any questions? Any more concerns? Okay, we'll go to the next one. Number three, authorizing the agreement between the county. Oh, I'm sorry, you want to vote on this? Excuse me. There's a motion been made. Second. And it's second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you, Michelle. Good night. I guess uh, Commissioner Gale is up now. Good evening, Commissioner. <laughs> Good evening. Authorizing agreement between the County of Albany and various school districts regarding the administrative expenses for the provision of special education programs. Yes, uh, good evening. The department requests uh, approval to uh, authorize an agreement between various school districts and departments in, in the department in regards to the special ed services. Mm -hmm. uh, the school districts do incur an administrative cost in terms of the Committee for Special Ed when they are reviewing those uh, referrals that have come before them in regards to those youths that have been identified as being in need of special education services. So we request uh, approval to uh, authorize an agreement between the county and the school districts to meet those administrative costs. Mr. Burdock, you have a question? Uh, just a quick informational question. I obviously took a look at North Colony and South Colony, and um, I was just curious on what, on what basis are, are people uh, reimbursed? Is it per, per client utilized? Is it actual cost? Because uh, the school districts are about the same. Uh, it is based on the number of students that they are actually coming before their committee. So it's based on that. On, on whatever the, uh, the census of special needs students Correct. is. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
I have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. No opposition? It's unanimous. Okay, your next one is number four. Authorizing an agreement with the Schenectady County regarding evaluation team services. Yes, uh, we would like to request approval to renew a contractual agreement with Schenectady County in the provision of evaluation services for the preschool special ed programming. Uh, Schenectady County currently does not have their own evaluation team, so uh, this has been an arrangement that has been in place for the last couple of years in regards to Albany County being able to provide those evaluation services to Schenectady County, and it does help to uh, generate revenue for the county, for Albany County. Any questions, clarity, concerns? Motion's been made. Approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In opposition, hearing none. It's unanimous. Number five, authorizing agreement regarding individualized education programs for the children's services ages three to five years old. Yes, again, the department requests uh, legislative authorization to renew contractual agreements with those service providers who have been approved by the Board of Ed to provide mandated individualized education programs through the related services for those uh, children uh, uh, ages three to five years old with disabilities. These services can include speech, occupational therapy, physical therapies. So these are programs that have been approved through the Board of Ed. Uh, these services can be provided in uh, various settings. It can uh, occur within the child's home. It can occur within a center-based uh, environment. But there's specifically those services that um, have been identified for these children. And um, these agencies are approved through the Board of Ed to, uh, to provide these right. services. Right. services. Excuse me. Okay. Any more concerns? Um, Mr. Bernard? Just a, a question or two. Sure. Uh, Commissioner, thank you very much for your response to the questions okay. that I submitted uh, for the other members of the committee. I just, uh, there were a couple of uh, um, providers. providers here, mm -hmm. uh, achievements and capital district beginnings that it had some history, uh, not necessarily with the county, but it was included with the county. It was really more of a statewide issue, and they were the subject of a controller's audit. And I, and I asked how much money uh, the county got back as a result of the statewide audit, and it was 137000 for beginnings and 25000 plus from achievements. And uh, I asked, since the controller released the audit, whether uh, uh, children, youth, and family services had changed their procedures to ensure that any taxpayer money was, was protected. And I realized that you have renewed this on, on an interim iterative basis, uh, but I was just curious, you, you say you're using now the McGinnis system? Yes. Could, could you explain what, what that is and how that kind of safeguard, safeguards the, uh, mm -hmm. the system? Okay, and so it's a software system that we purchased, and it, within the system there are some fail-safes, if you will. There's specific information that needs to be entered into the system in regards to when that provider met with the child, what was the specific time that they met with the child for the duration of the time, what were the specific services provided, as well as a summary of the services. And this is helpful because um, before this was something that was really a manual oversight in terms of being able to really um, accurately account for and track when services were provided. And so if you had a service provider, not necessarily um, <coughs> with the intent to defraud, but if they had, um, you know, in, um, inadvertently put the same time that they provided a service to child X and they provided um, a service to child W within that same time frame, we may not necessarily have um, been able to catch that from a manual standpoint, but now because of the fail-safes that are within the McGinnis system, that is one of the features that it allows us to be able to better track to ensure there's no duplication of um, service uh, times that are being input into the system. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much for that. And I assume a lot of the other issues that were raised about these particular vendors are actually issues that SED sorts out in their certification process. Correct. And so as part of their rate setting and their rate methodology, there is a prescribed uh, 
uh, if algorithm, if you will, in terms of how that rate setting occurs. And so, you know, we do as part of our um, fail safe, if you will, on the county um, standpoint, is until we actually have that approved rate from SED, so that the agencies have specifically submitted the necessary paperwork that they have to the state ed in order to get their rate. We are not going to process any claims until we actually have that approved rate setting from um, state ed. Okay, and the last question I, I, I sort of had that I had a little follow-up was I asked whether uh, uh, have you, since these occurrences in the audit, have you had to reject any charges as a result of uh, your changing any procedures or processes with these vendors. Okay, and so I will say as a routine practice, every claim that comes to us is reviewed to ensure that what they are claiming for, they are meeting whatever uh, criteria they need to. So as general, as a practice, any claim that comes in where there's any discrepancies, those are always sent back for resubmission. Okay, but the, the, the discrepancy, I guess what I, I'm asking for is so I could these are, these are sort of ministerial in nature, they're not threshold integrity issues or anything like that. That actually was part of what came through with the audit itself. In terms of the service okay. provision to the youths, that was really not um, okay. as much of an issue. It was really more in terms of administrative claiming procedures, and I think that's so, something that... So in your professional judgment, you're very comfortable with them as a, uh, as a provider, given the the way we're operating and using them right and now. And if we're going to focus specifically on the services that the children are receiving, yes, that is okay. actually not. Thank you. And, uh, you know, that is something that we ensure that we have that communication with the parents as well as the school districts if there are any concerns with the agencies. And that actually, with everything that has occurred, is not, we did not receive any negative information into the actual services that the children were being provided. Great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your feedback. So your concern was based on something from 2012 back in well, the day, it was, and now it was we've two, expanded our yeah, electronic Yeah, 2009, uh, studies, yes. there were some questionable yes, things made ago. the press. Audit in 2012, money recaptured in 2014, and it's kind of, is it, is it still working well today? It's working good today. Yes. Any other questions of concern? In motion to accept? It has been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposition? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Okay, final one is authorizing the uh, preschool education services agreement for the children with special needs, ages 3 to 5. Commissioner. Okay. Thank you. So uh, similar to the last uh, RLA, this mm -hmm. is uh, the department is requesting approval to renew contractual agreements with service providers who again have been approved mm -hmm. through the Board of Ed as having an appropriate structured program uh, capable of offering mandated preschool special ed services. Mm -hmm. So unlike the other RLA, which was related services that would uh, could occur in um, various environments, this is specifically uh, services within a structured uh, center-based program and so you have a list of all the center-based providers that have been approved through Board of Head to provide these services. And so the request is to renew our contractual agreements with these providers. Mr. Bullock has a question. On the uh, center-based providers, why do you have uh, providers in uh, Clifton Park and Troy and uh, Castleton? What, those are out-of-county providers. Uh, and why are we funding those providers? Because the school districts and the parents, they have the leeway, if you will, to choose. So as long as there is a program that is approved by the Board of Ed, there is a list there, and the parents have that um, ability to be able to choose their provider. And so if these are providers that the parents are choosing, then based on the um, New York State, these are providers that we have to pay for. So the parents have to be uh, based in Albany County and not the providers, you're saying? Correct. Correct. Okay. Hmm. Any other questions or concerns for the commissioner? Okay. Prepared to have his motion been made? And it's been seconded by Mr. Birdoff. All in favor? Oh, aye. Uh, any opposition? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Uh, Commissioner, I guess we can expect to tour with you April the 29th on a Friday. Is that going to happen or not it this week? It pops up on my calendar. It did pop up. Good. Thank <laughs> God for Microsoft. Okay, so we'll see you at the tour. Okay? Okay, okay maybe we'll let you know. All right. I hear motion to adjourn. Motion's been made to adjourn.
approved. Second. Second. All in favor. All right. Aye. Go home. Thank you. Oh, yeah.